Hey guys, it's David from Automotive Press. As you guys know, I'm a former manufacturing engineer, used to build and design cars for a living. So I love coming to manufacturing plants. It doesn't matter where it is in the world. I love going there. I've visited more than 1,000 different factories in the world. And today I'm back at the master plant in Hofu City. Hofu is about an hour away from Hiroshima. That's where the master's head office is and they've been kind enough to let me come back to the factory. It's been two or three years since I've been to Hofu plant, but this is my number one place to come because from my perspective as an engineer, it is the most advanced and most impressive plant in the world. Why? Well, I'm gonna explain to that in a, a little short while, but they have some of the most interesting, very innovative technology and manufacturing method that even Toyota is not using, and they also have some of the highest quality. Now I've said this over and over again that Mazda has the best engineering team and the best manufacturing team on site and I cannot stress that enough because of the way they design and build these vehicles. Right here in the Hofa plant they produce the Mazda CX-60, 70, 80 and 90 series. As you guys know the Mazda CX-70 and 90s are sold in North America but Mazda CX-60 and also the CX-80s are sold elsewhere in Asia, Europe and so forth. But all four models are produced right here at the Hof plant and it is the most impressive factory because they use some very impressive technology which I'll explain in a short while here. So right here I'm standing in front of one of their products right here in the factory and I'm in Hofu in Japan. What excitement, let me tell you more about the Mazda manufacturing method and how this whole thing works like a perfection. Let's go. All right guys, so this is the uh, battery production for the plug-in hybrid models right behind me. So a couple of interesting things to uh, keep in mind. One is that uh, it's riding on top of an AGV, which is Automated Guided Vehicle, AGV for short. You can see the pallet, a structure that sits on top of AGV. And this AGV moves by itself, it's wireless. It doesn't require human intervention. It's programmed to run throughout the factory to actually carry out this process. So in this particular case, the AGV is holding a pallet, the pallet is holding the battery pack, and the worker is actually installing the battery pack and finishing the assembly of the battery pack. Very interesting because you can't see it right now, but there's also a blue one, a blue AGV over there, which brings the, the parts that have been pre-selected, and then the, the production worker will pick up the parts and install. Also, if you notice, when he's installing the nuts and bolts, that particular tool that he is using has a built-in transducer that measures the torque. So when you bolt something down, it has to be measured and it's always at the right torque amount. Not too much, not too little, and it has to be in a certain sequence. So there's actually um, a camera that looks at the sequencing of it. So they cannot skip a bolt as well. It has to be done in a certain sequence. So they can't skip the bolt, they can't skip the process, they can't make a mistake with the torque and they can't make a mistake with the parts because it's pre-selected. And the whole thing moves wirelessly and that's why when you um, build something like this, which is a sub-assembly of the plug-in hybrid model, it comes out perfect with zero mistakes. So now we are arriving at the plug-in hybrid battery installation area. So you can see that the AGV or once again automatic guided vehicles are carrying the finished battery pack that goes into plug-in hybrid models so the whole battery pack is residing on top of the AGV on a pallet. That AGV will move by itself, automate it, and it will line up with the car body with the right sequencing, so right serial number is connected and aligned to the right body, and the worker will then install the battery pack right on top of the, from the AGV, installed right behind the vehicle. So what's really good about this place is the fact that because you don't have a fixed conveyor belt, because you don't have a fixed equipment of any kind, if you need to increase the number of uh, plug-in hybrid models, you just increase the number of um, AGVs, which means you increase the number of uh, battery pack, and therefore you can adjust the uh, volume up and down simply by adding or subtracting the number of AGVs, which are all flexible. So 100% flexibility in terms of how you want to align this area, uh, and again, What's really unique is the fact that the AGV is carrying the actual part that gets installed onto the car directly. That's something that was not done before because normally they use AGV to carry smaller parts but not to carry the large battery pack and then they don't usually use the AGV as a supporting system 
to install something directly onto the car. So that's something very new. And again, complete flexibility. Uh, and they can reconfigure this on the fly because there's nothing fixed onto the floor here. So this is one of the ways to ensure that there is a flexibility and that the manufacturing is very agile. All right, guys, so we are at the most important junction of the Mazda manufacturing, which is the final assembly of the engine and the power train and the rear axle onto the body. So if you look carefully, we got two large AGVs. The one in the front is holding the transmission and the engine, and the one in the back is holding the rear axle and the suspension pieces. You can tell they're moving independently of each other, and the front and the back can move distance forward and backward based on the size of the car. Smaller the car, the closer the platform comes together, the larger the car, the further apart these are. It requires no change in terms of a conveyor belt or equipment because it is 100% flexible and it's residing on these two large AGVs. So you got the front engine and you've got the rear axle right here. Now they've just positioned themselves to the right distance and it's gonna move forward and it's gonna line up itself with the correct body. Okay, but they all has to be sequenced. So it's like lining up for a, a concert hall. It's lining up, it's gonna slowly move toward uh, the stage, if you wanna call that a stage, and then it's going to line up with the car and then it's gonna move forward with the car and then the assembly worker will then install the front section of the car, which is your engine and transmission and then they will install the back end of the car, which is the rear axle and the suspension pieces. Once again, AGV is basically kind of almost floating in the air sort of thing. It's not tied to anything. It's not tied to a conveyor belt. You can see the, the back end just came. The front end is now coming. It's programmed to have the perfect distance between the two, so that it's lined up to the correct body that's on the top there because they're producing CX-60. 70, 80, and 90 series, they all have a different length, different wheelbase. So if they have a different wheelbase, these two have to be spaced apart accordingly because you can't have the same distance for all four cars, okay? So it's gonna move forward, it's gonna line up with the cars, and then go over there for installation. This is what I call the magic of Mazda manufacturing, most impressive part of this. As far as I know, no one else is doing this in the world. By using the AGV and the flexibility, they can incorporate many different models in the future. And this part is, you know what, just absolutely, absolutely life-changing in terms of what they've done to modern manufacturing. I think it's the most impressive part of the mass uh, manufacturing system. I want to just add one more interesting uh, item here, and that is the fact that these AGVs, it's also very complicated. They require general cleaning and so forth. So actually the operator themselves does some of the simple maintenance and cleaning of all the AGVs, they maintain them on their own. And obviously some of the more complicated maintenance work or repairs are done by technicians, but they have to keep these things up and running without any problem. So they're responsible for their own equipment as well. So we are nearing the end of the production for this beautiful master plant in Whole Foods, uh, just an hour away from Hiroshima. I still think this may be the world's best manufacturing based because of technology, the type of training they do, the amount of investment and commitment they have to quality. So here we are at the very end. In some way, they say this is an emotional part of the manufacturing because the final car is coming off the assembly line. Everything has been checked. There has been multiple, multiple uh, people checking for quality, making sure everything works. Suppliers, engineers, manufacturing people all came together to make this a successful final unit and from here, it actually goes through some additional testing for things like head-up display, check for speed, check for water leak, and so forth. So some additional testing, but, but this is the, um, the most important part because once it comes to this end, we are basically at the conclusion of the factory, the cars are ready for a customer, and all the energy, all the thinking, all the time and investment has poured into this car to make this possibility. And I can't really think of any other manufacturing plant in the world that has adopted such a flexible and integrated system, uh, still takes into account human elements and craftsmanship and produce such a beautiful car with a high quality. And here we are, uh, Mazda, final product. And you know what, I almost need to bow the Japanese way because the cars are so beautiful, but also manufactured so amazing well. So hopefully you guys appreciate um, 
a difference between Mazda's production system and some other manufacturing place where they may not spend as much time or as much thinking uh, to produce a car like this. I think, again, Mazda has done an amazing job. My hat's off to the whole team, and they we're very thankful to have uh, a factory tour with my business students from all across the world, and we're very happy that Mazda has accommodated us here in Japan. For now, I'm signing off. Thank you so much.